Good evening, everyone. I'd like to thank everyone for their patience, first and foremost, and also welcome to everyone this evening, new members, returning members, and the members of the public, and those watching at home. A uh, quick announcement that there will be no fire drill due, so if an alarm does sound, make your way downstairs and officers will direct you. Uh, going on to item number one, which is apologies. I've received apologies from Councillor Claymore. Are there any other apologies? Item number two, appointment of vice chair. I'd like to nominate Dave Foster. Can I look for a seconder, please? Councillor Smith. Are there any other nominations? No, okay. Then I'd like to move to the vote. All those in favour of Councillor Foster? Thank you very much. Item number three, the minutes from the previous meeting held on the 23rd of April 2024 are here for approval. Can I request a mover and a seconder of those that were at the last meeting? Councillor Adams, Councillor Summers, thank you very much. Item 5A, applications for consideration 0367. Sorry. Oh, sorry, yes, sorry. Sorry, item number four, declarations of interest. Thank you, Chair. Um, just to declare an interest in the South Staffordshire College application 367-023, I have expressed on many occasions an, a, an opinion about this application. I'm not going to reveal what it is. But... And uh, as a result, I will retire from the meeting whilst that application is discussed and voted on. Thank you, Councillor Kingston. Any other declaration? I should declare an interest in item number two, as uh, the applicant is my local news agent. Thank you, Councillor Turner. Moving on to applicant. Item number five, applications for consideration 03672023 South Staffs College. I'd like to hand over to Glenn Baker. Thank you, Chair. Good evening, councillors. Um, so, yes, the first application is for the demolition of all the existing buildings on the South Staffordshire College site off Cross Street in Tamworth. The application is the precursor to the main application for the development of the site. Uh, this application is currently still under consideration. There's some work needs to be done by uh, the applicants and involvement with Sports England, who still object to this scheme due to their playing pitch mitigation that's required to develop the site forward. The application for the demolition before us today is the precursor to this main application. And the application itself for demolition is required to provide the criteria for procurement for relevant contractors to, to carry out the demolition works. Suitable plans have been submitted for the demolition of, of, the, of the buildings that you can see on screen in front of you today. And the blue lines, uh, blue lined plans indicate the buildings that will be demolished. The circular area to the east of the site, that's where the material will be deposited and much of it which will be used in the construction of the building once it's under construction. This material obviously is located significantly away from the residential properties uh, located nearby to the site. Additionally, a construction management um, plan will need to be submitted um, prior to the demolition works carried out, so there's more information to be put forward that will need um, some information from the Carmody Highways Authority just to make sure that the um, information within that is suitable. But the plans generally show any, a suitable site for um, where this material will be used and the, in, the exit and the end exit, sorry, the exit and the entry of the contractors' vehicles that will be doing the work themselves. As per condition four as well, um, additional work will, could be required in terms of back mitigation. In terms of other ecology matters, they have been satisfied with relevant reports which have passed scrutiny with the ecology officer at Staffordshire County Council. So as a result of the application being required for the, as I said, the mitigation works and the relevant reports and the vehicle uh, movements have been satisfied by the County Highways Authority um, and a lot of the moving material would be suitably stored. An uh, application um, is relevant um, to, uh, to continue with the main work for the, the construction of the college site. The application is recommended for approval with a number of conditions as per the report. Thank you. Thank you, Glenn. I'd like to invite Brendan Dale to speak now.
Good evening, Good evening everyone. Uh, my name is Brendan Dale. I'm a Senior Planning and Enabling Manager at Homes England and uh, I'd like to thank you for giving me this opportunity to speak in favour of the application being determined tonight, which is for the demolition of the existing buildings at South Staffordshire College off of uh, Croft Street. The application represents an excellent opportunity to repurpose brownfield land, uh, which is in an excellent location within Tadworth and uh, is a crucial step towards the transformation of the site, um, which will, sorry, um, is a crucial step towards the transformation of the site, uh, which will be in line with Tamworth's growth aspirations. Um, the application itself has been informed by our technical consultant team and a range of stakeholders, including Tamworth Borough Council, uh, Staffordshire County Council, and in particular their highways and ecology departments. Um, and consultation with local residents to understand their priorities and concerns, both for the demolition and any future redevelopment of the site. Um, the application is in line with Tamworth Borough Council local plan and the national planning policy framework in that it, uh, they prioritised the redevelopment of brownfield land um, and the, uh, the, re the provision of, of uh, housing. Um, Homes England are the government's housing and regeneration agency, and we are we understand the need to minimise disruption throughout the works process. Um, with the application has been submitted with a demolition works plan, which seeks to limit vehicle movements and uh, ensure highway safety, and that's been considered um, and approved by Staffordshire County Council. Um, the Throughout the duration of the works, resident well-being will be a key consideration for us and as Glenn just outlined, um, the contractors will be pr uh, providing a construction and environmental management plan which will see, uh, have measures to uh, reduce the impact on residents such as dust suppression and limiting the hours of operation. Um, we will also oblige them to provide uh, a key point of contact so residents can um, get in touch if there are any specific concerns that they might have. Uh, the ecology conditions which have just been outlined and are in the officer report um, for further surveys and mitigation will be implemented um, to protect biodiversity and ecology that's on site at present. And in conclusion, the demolition represents a crucial step in the transformation of the site. The application is in line with the local plan and we work to address uh, concerns um, of local residents and re local residents at this stage. Homes England are committed to working with Tamworth Borough Council uh, and developers to transform the site um, and in a way that complements the existing community. Um, thank you. Thank you, Brendan. Does anyone have any questions? Councillor Foster. Yeah, just a quick one. Roughly how long will the demolition take? How long, you know, in terms of days? Uh, in terms of days, it's programmed to last up to six months, but it would likely be um, a, a, a period potentially shorter than that, about to six months. Anyone else? No. Councillor Clark. Thank you. Um, did I hear that you, uh, the um, method of demolition is to be provided, a report on that? Because so a demolition works plan has been provided at this stage around highway safety. Um, just to ensure that vehicles can access the site safely. Um, uh, but a construction and environmental management plan will be a condition of the um, application should it be approved, which will include measures to um, minimise disruption where possible. Is going to be, sorry, concrete is going to be crushed and that takes special equipment. Uh, it also has abrasive ingredients which are rather bad for your ear, nose and throat. So I'm looking at residents who stay there and have to look, after, look at this for six months. Before I ask for any more questions, can I ask that they're directed at the officers, please? No, sorry. Anyone else? Councillor Coates. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, does anyone know the type of trucks that will be used on this? This is a two-parter. So types of trucks, Brendan, could you remember, we did do the um, additional work was required by highways. Do you remember what the upshot of that was, please? 
yeah, sorry, I can't remember off the top of my head the exact type of trucks, but they're, um, I think, six-wheel uh, uh, loaders, essentially. Councillors? Oh, oh sorry. Um, okay, um, because I've been looking into it, and the minimum truck with a six-wheeler, you say, is about 2.7 metres wide, going up to three metres wide. The narrowest part on that road, which I believe is Croft Street, um, I measured it myself, is 5.4 metres. So you are not going to get two trucks passing there, which means one is going to have to stick out on Upper Gungate, which is going to cause a massive traffic jam. How will this be dealt with? Thank you. So we've had no objections from uh, Staffordshire County Council Highways. Um, quite often when you get large vehicles such as trucks or it could be emergency vehicles that are quite large etc what we do is we ask for tracking and we track the vehicles and their trajectory as they they move and maneuver around uh, onto the plans to ensure that there are adequate passing places that they've got space to move and do what they need to so based on all the work that supported the application no objection has come in from um, from our county council highways colleagues Councillor Smith. Yeah, I've got a number of questions, so feel free to step in if you want to diversify it. Um, so you mentioned a plan. Um, just to confirm, is that the construction method statement that we're talking about? Can I ask it to go to the office, please, Councillor Smith? So yeah, construction method statements are quite broad. So generally speaking, there's a lot of text, so a lot of information about yeah when they do their operations, suppression of materials, um, dust and material, but there'll also be plans to go along with that that show routing of vehicles and times, etc. So it's like a combination of both, if you like. I know it's... I know it's fairly normal to not necessarily have that in place uh, prior to tonight. Um, but one, one thing I am concerned about is given that the amount of disruption in terms of the dust, um, possible um, debris being dispersed, um, because I'm assuming there's going to be heavy equipment in that area. There's clearly a railway line within meters. I realize there's trees there, um, but I'm actually quite concerned about this because um, uh, network rail and they produced the network rails asset protection document didn't they and they were uh, slightly concerned given their position in that area um, so I do wonder um, if this report I suppose this method statement couldn't be done now given the risks involved So generally speaking, you know, these construction method statements are a requirement before any sort of works take place. So even before, you know, the entertainment of vehicles on site, yeah, yeah, enter the, the, the site, they will have to provide this information. I mean, I'm happy to potentially branch this out to Network Rail. Generally speaking, it's just the highway authority that get involved, but, you know, quite easily we can add, you know, the, the rail won't work uh, operator to have a look at the information as well and give their say and hopefully give their approval to the document. If there's any information they need to, you know, make it better, then that we can work with Homes England to get that information, you know, submitted. Yeah, I mean, the report from them does actually talk about a reciprocal um, dialogue. Um, so I would, um, I would definitely suggest that. Um, just a couple of more things in regards to the sort of network rail element. Um, is the contractor obliged to be a member of the National Federation of Demolition Contractors, as that as outlined in the report by Network Rail? Not that I'm aware of. No. Is... Yeah, they're suggesting it. Strongly suggesting it. Um, well, what I was going to say is that, again, going back to the report, there's no objections from Network Rail to the application. But what we've got at the back of the report, underneath the conditions, is like um, informatives for the developer um, who will be undertaking the demolition. And it runs through some of the sort of expectations that Network Rail have around doing this type of work in the vicinity of their assets. 
but they don't have an objection in principle. But there's a dialogue here between the developer and Network Rail. That's what an informative does to make sure that they have the appropriate risk assessments, um, that they um, keep access to the railway, that they don't encroach onto land, etc. We know full well, though, that obviously there are stipulations and they have outlined those stipulations. So clearly we have to adhere to that. So based on what I was just saying about the um, being a member of that national federation, I would advise that, you know, you look into that to ensure that that is the case um, and that the right contractors are used if this was to go ahead. Um, I have got another question. Um, so who is liable if something goes wrong? Because the report by Network Rail does outline a lot of liability issues. Who is liable if um, one of those uh, that is outlined in the report is violated? Is it the contractor? Is it contractor slash developer or is it TBC? That's a good question. Um, I, I don't know why it would be Tamworth Borough Council. Um, it's not our land, it's not our development. They're not our contractors, it's not our scheme. We're just making a decision on it today. Um, I, I would say it's going to be uh, the developer stroke contractor. Um, I'm looking to... I think possibly it'd be the developer or their contractor, so there'd be vicarious liability between, you know, obviously the contractor, if, if, if the negligence is caused by the contractor, then the developer may be liable for that as a result of that contractual relationship. But, I mean, in terms of the question anyway, it's probably not a material planning consideration in relation to who's liable if there's a problem with the works that are carried out. That's not really something that committees should be considering in deciding whether to, um, determine, well, in the determination of the application. So I think it's probably a, an academic point anyway. Well, it clearly is important, obviously, if we were to be liable, because we're sitting here as part of the council. So it's just, you know, it's just some reassurance, really, and it's interesting to hear your answers. Um, so moving on, um, in regards to the county council report, um, in terms of them green lighting this, I noticed that their document was quite literally a couple of pages in terms of the highways and the, and the issues potentially around that. Is that their report? Is that it? Is that all they've produced on this in terms of the disruption around on their on the roads and streets? Yeah, so initially the application was scrutinised. There was a few questions that the officer, uh, now as Malik, I believe he is, at the county council had of the applicant. They provided that information and then as a result of that dialogue, the Form X, as it's called, is a formal document that goes online. That consultation response with the heading and is their, yeah, their, their analysis of the situation and their comments to say, yeah, we agree with what's been provided, um, subject to conditions as per the report. That's it. Yeah, so that's pretty much that. Um, I mean, you know, given the amount of concern, of course, from the residents in terms of all sorts of factors, you know, just the, the space, the traffic disruption, the safety aspects of, as well, I would have thought there would be much more of a thorough uh, reportage and analysis by the County Council on this one. So I'm quite surprised by that level, given the amount of uh, concern in this area. that I would just um, reiterate the comments that that Glenn has just provided you know there has been a lot of dialogue in the background between the applicant agent and the County Council's highways team which has resulted in a what we call form X which actually delivers their conclusion which is uh, that they've got uh, no objection to make so the the work's been done um, it might not necessarily be in a, in a big document and visible, but they have done the work in the background to make sure that they are comfortable with the scheme, the proposal, and all safety aspects that go with moving you know, large vehicles with demolition material in it through residential areas. Thank you. Last question, Chair. No, I'll, uh... Oh, I might have some more later. Right, so there is uh, one area, um, as highlighted by one of the residents in one of their letters that was sent in, of course, uh, into that dreaded portal that needs to be updated and changed. It's quite hard to uh, read a lot of the letters that come in. So um, we, the report, I believe, the report that's been produced tonight doesn't mention that there was any fatalities. I believe one of the residents does believe there was a fatality uh, a couple of years ago. Can we put the record straight? No, sorry, I can't confirm any information about that. Um, 
I suppose it, in effect the that information would come forward might be a part of the full application so when that does go to committee there might be more information about the local area characteristics and you know injuries and fatalities within the local area but to, specific to this demolition that information is not really a, a consideration for highways at that time at this time yeah i suspect the suspect the confusion might be around and i don't know the facts on this and maybe one of the residents will outline this who, who knows at some point but um you know, it could well be that actually the the location that in terms of the uh, fatalities was was very much limited to Croft uh, Street and not the actual upper great upper Gungate main road. So I would suggest um, looking into that. Apologies, that's not a question, but I would suggest that's looked into further. Thank you, Councillor Smith. Councillor Turner. Thank you, Chair. Yes, uh, going on for mitigating risk and, uh, for the council and, and, and us, re <coughs> excuse me, us residents, um, you're probably aware that we're about to, or the county is about to spend nearly a million pound completely resurfacing Gungate, Upper Gungate. And my concern is that if we do that work before, which is the timing, and for example, we then start putting construction vehicles up and down Gungate, Who's responsible if there's any damage? And as a side to that, to, to, to mitigate the risk of wrecking a new road, so to speak, at a million pound, what are our plans to make sure that the timing of the construction and the heavy vehicles, that are going to be 20, 30 tonne moving in and out, doesn't wreck that new road? Can I ask what the timing is, please, of the resurfacing of Gungate? Last we heard that it was coming out after May this year, so any time going forward. I mean, essentially, um, if you were minded to to approve this application today, um, there there are five years within which this demolition application could be implemented um, and of course as we know the college are still occupying those buildings and will continue to do for for a little bit longer so you know i i don't have the exact timing of when the demolition is proposed um, and i also don't have the timing for the gun gate resurfacing but both clearly need to happen um, I, I think that's all i've got to say actually on that i know we spoke last year when you did your presentation and i said look you know if that's happening, then maybe we could do some synergy and clever thinking that if there's a new traffic island to go in at Croft Street to make it better for the schools and whatever, traffic periods, high peak periods, now's the time to discuss and look at that. I think we also need to remember that there, there are two applications. One is for demolition and the impact of that on the highway network. And there, there is a second application, which is not here today, for discussion, which is the actual proposal for the new build, whatever's going back on that site, and the impact that that will have on the road network. Um, I don't think the demolition application has the impact on the road network that necessitates um, all the additional highways infrastructure that, that may or may not be necessary. We're probably talking about the next application and, the, and that impact. So that, I mean, I take your point, but I would like to, you know, put it on record that we should ask county when the new road's going in, and if we start running 40 ton trucks up and down it, what's what's the consequence? Sorry, I think I might be able to assist. The, the, the county council does have powers under the Highways Act to actually make a claim against the developer. So, if there's what what is termed as extraordinary traffic over a piece of road, over a section of road that causes damage to the road, the highway authority do have powers to look to the developer to actually recover the cost of repairing the road. A lot. We're going to resurface it and we're going to put in a, you know, do what we need to do. But are they aware that th this development's coming down the line? Is the joined up thinking? That's my question. I understand what you're saying. I was also just going to add, um, that uh, what the County Council do is they actually they survey the highway in the vicinity of developments as well um, and they, they uh, I forget the name of it but they, but they look to see what's there so that if you've got wagons that have gone over the pavement and they've cracked it and bits have chipped off and broken away then, that, then the, the developer would be responsible at the end of the completion of that development to go back and make good anything that's happened but I get your point on coordination 
Yeah, we need to look at that because it could be that you start to demolish as they start to put the new road in. And that's going to be chaos because it's a main artery. Thank you, Councillor Turner. Any more questions? Councillor Clark. Thank you. Getting used to this, Chairman. Um, I'm reassured, certainly, that the County Council has no objections from a highway point of view. So I, I know that for certain that they will have covered all of the items regarding their potential highway reconstructions or improvements and will fit in with a diary, if you like, to prioritise the timing of this. Um, with regard to the attenuation uh, pond, which I know is only a temporary pond, should we have any excess rain, um, would we, can I be reassured that obviously our sewage system is up to par also, who would have normally looked over that and given it the okay? Because we do have flooding issues on occasion. Forgive me, I'm sorry, I don't think there was an attenuation pond. The circle on the plans is the area which the demolition material will be located. So that's the, yeah, that's where that will be. There's nothing proposed yet for attenuation ponds. Maybe as part of the full application, there will be definitely the need for attenuation and suds, etc., but not part of the demolition proposals. Councillor Pallet. Okay, um, my, my only worry is um, there's going to be um, an awful lot of debris to remove. We're going to be using, are we going to be using lots of lorries, say 40 lorries? Are we going to be using two lorries? Whatever we use, it's going to have a detrimental effect coming out of Cross Street. It's already bad there now. That's going to cause a lot of problems for, for highways and for people in Tamworth when you've got loads of lorries keep coming down that way. How are you going to dispose of the debris? So a lot of it will actually be on site. So as part of... We'll go back, sorry. That circular over there on the site, that's where a lot of the material will actually be stored. So a lot of the material actually will be remaining on site and will be reused in the construction of the development um, should it go ahead. So that's all on site. And obviously part of the construction management scheme as well, that will again stipulate any other material and how that will be managed and the quantity and frequency of movements that are likely to be had as a result of that. <laughs> So what you're basically saying then is that we're not going to have loads of lorries coming out of Cross Street and going into Cross Street all during the day? Yeah, as a result of much of the site, yeah, material being stored on site, yeah, the impacts on the local road network will not be as significant. Thank you, Councillor Pallet. Any more questions? Then like to... Councillor. Yeah, my question is, how much thought has actually been uh, sort of produced, really, in terms of, like, thinking a little bit outside the box. And, by the way, you know, I completely realise I'm not the expert here, but what, what sort of thought has there been in terms of establishing additional access points in and out? Because, obviously, we're completely reliant on Cough Street here, which is obviously what most of the worry is. So what, what thought has there been? You know, for example, at some point within the demolition, could there not be a new access point created um, through the the part that aligns itself with the railway, for example, um, you know, a week into the de demolition, you know, just thinking of ideas that potentially might alleviate that stress point on that junction. A lot of that dialogue has been had, as I say, at the initial application stages right up to where we are now, and this is the end result in terms of movements. And again, it's been scrutinised by the relevant people. They know they are the County Highways Authority, they're the experts in this, and they deem it to be satisfactory that we're looking at this is to be the suitable option. Um, so yeah, I'm just, again, I'm led by, by the experts on, on this one. If I could just add that the, the site is actually considerably constrained because you've got a college on one side, you've got a railway on the other, and actually the only other access point would be onto Gungate, a little bit lower down, where you've got a bridge over a railway line. So, it, you know, it, it has been looked at, and unfortunately, the only the only possible way in and out are the existing roads on Cross Street. Any more questions? Then I'd like to move to the discussion part. Does anyone want to speak on this application? Councillor Smith. 
Yeah, I'm going to be voting against this. Um, you know, I'm all for, by the way, for, um, you know, house building in general. I think we need to build more houses, that's, that's clear. But I do think not enough attention um, has been placed on, on, on planning this and, and strategizing. Well, I don't see the evidence of that in a way. Um, I've got massive concerns with the access in and out. Um, as, uh, for example, Councillor Coates pointed out about the, the, the size of that area in terms of these trucks um, coming in and out. Um, uh, in terms of the safety aspect, which may well be the, the biggest concern here, um, I, I've got massive concerns. It's a very busy area, as we all know, and um, I just wonder, you know, is there going to be you know, a risk too far? And, of course, you've got the railway line as well, and the report from Network Rail does clearly stress some massive concerns um, that have clearly have to be, you know, mitigated or appeased some way. Um, so I think... It, it, in my view, I, I, I would prefer to vote against this. I'm not confident. Um, I think it doesn't actually pass the test within the local plan, uh, specifically around SU1 and SU2, specifically more so around 7.5 of SU1 and probably 7.10 and 7.11 of SU2 as well in the local plan. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Smith. Anyone else wants to speak on this matter? Afraid not, no. If there are no more, and if no one else wants to speak on this matter, the recommendations are to agree the reasons for approval set out in the report and resolve to grant planning permission subject to conditions listed in Section 8. So, um, we're looking for a mover and second for the recommendations to agree the reasons for approval set out in this report and to resolve to grant planning permission subject to conditions listed in section 8 of this report. Sorry if I didn't make it clear. Can I actually move against it? I'd like to move it, please, for the reasons that I've already outlined. I think the difficulty you have, if, if you, you're planning to put forward reasons for refusal on highway grounds, clearly the statutory consultancy, the, the county council, haven't objected or raised any sorts of concerns about the, what's, what's proposed. So clearly if, if, if the application was refused and went to appeal, um, it would be difficult then to perhaps sustain, sustain that reason for refusal and potentially it could expose the council to the, the risk of a cost award if, if the council is deemed to be acting unreasonably. So I, th I think reasons for refusal solely on highway grounds, I think, I think they'd be difficult to sustain on appeal. Yeah, well, you know, we are here, it is democracy. Obviously we are councillors, so we are allowed to uh, discuss and, and potentially vote, specifically around the SU, uh, SU2. Um, we're talking about planning permission should be only be granted when development would ensure adequate highway safety and suitable access. So if you want specifics around that, that's one of them. And I think that's an actual key area. So I would be looking for a seconder on this. One second. I don't know if you just overheard what, what we were discussing, but in, in terms of the reason you're putting forward to refusal, the, the officers wouldn't be able to support that reason for refusal, and it would be very difficult to sustain our appeal. So it is open to you as a committee, obviously, to table a motion to defer the matter for further evidence to be provided or for the, the issues to be assessed further. So that, that is open to you as members, rather than... Um, a motion to refuse the application. It, 
if it means that we can come to a position on this, I'd like to defer and move the motion to defer this. I think there's clearly issues here that need, we need some more reassurance. I don't think actually the views of the residents have really been picked up. Um, I think that's quite obvious in the report. There's some key areas that they're, they're noticing and have not been thoroughly analyzed and, uh, and certainly consulted on by outside agencies as well. So I'd love to move to, to defer, the, uh, defer this, please. Sorry, can you just set out, I mean, in terms of if you were minded to table a motion to defer the, the application, could you just set out what you would want officers to be doing as a result of that deferment? What, what further work needs to be carried out in order to satisfy members? Yeah, I mean, I can go more in depth, I suppose, offline, um, but clearly there are areas around about around the safety aspect, for example, um, and suitable access in and out of cross streets. So they, those those are at the top two areas. Of course, you've got the report from the county council, but I'm sorry, but a two page report. I mean, come on, this is ridiculous. There needs to be a fully analysed and comprehensive report from the county council establishing the reasons why they actually support this. Councillor Smith, um, if you'd like to table a motion, then obviously set out the reasons, as long as it's limited to highway access and safety. I think so, that's yeah. what it's... Then obviously we'll look... Yeah, so the reasons are, well, by the way, um, this is our local plan, by the way. We actually developed a local plan, and we have it to use as guidance, of course, in these situations. So um, specifically around SU1 and SU2, uh, SU2 states planning permission should only be granted where development would ensure adequate highway safety and suitable access for all people. I'm looking for a seconder. Was it Councillor Turner? Jim, happy to second that. Okay, then I'd like to move to the vote. All those in favour? Can you keep your hands up for a second, please? Thank you. All those against? Any abstentions? Yeah. Yeah, the matter's been deferred. So, yeah, the matter's been deferred and we'll come back to that one at a later date. Moving on to applications for consideration 0061. 2024 Land off Moor Lane Bowl Hall. I'd like to hand over to Andrew Davis to present the report. And also Councillor Turner, thank you very much. Good evening. Yeah. 
think uh, if if I may proceed, can you hear me adequately at the back now? I was. Can, can you hear me adequately at the back of the room now? That is better. Yes. If everybody will speak as you speak, that would be fine. Thank you. This application 0061 2024 uh, relates to the installation of a stoned access track manoeuvring area to the front of an existing agricultural building, a timber restroom, both of which are already in place and are therefore retrospective, plus the installation of solar panels to the rear roof slope of the existing agricultural building, which is proposed. The uh, site location is to the north of the West Coast Main Line um, within Bowl Hall, accessed from Moor Lane. Um, and uh, as you can see on the, um, the plan there, the uh, area uh, in, in red to the eastern part of the, um, the image there um, is the land belonging to the applicant. And indicated there in blue, is the access route to the site, which is not within the applicant's ownership. The, um, the land, uh, the, the, the route not within the applicant's ownership um, is comprised of Moor Lane, a route designated as a byway open to all traffic from the northern end of Moor Lane to the, uh, uh, the railway bridge, oh, sorry, the, the railway itself. Um, through the underpass at the railway um, and for a short distance to the north of that uh, is a bridle way and then to the east from the um, uh, departure point from the bridle way it's an undesignated track the site layout where the um, uh, timber building is currently um, and uh, a large part of the uh, surfacing uh, that is subject to this application is indicated on the image um, showing now. As you can see, the, uh, the agricultural storage building is in the um, uh, southeastern uh, corner there, and the um, timber building is to the, uh, the north of that by some 30 metres or so. Uh, the hard standing area, or rather the stoned area um, serving the, the agricultural building, providing access to it, is indicated um, on this plan um, and um, provides access not just to the, uh, the agricultural storage building, but also up to the, uh, uh, the, what's described as the timber restroom. This application has uh, obviously been consulted um, with a number of consultees. Network Rail, who have um, considered it and uh, raised no objections. Staffordshire County Council Ecology, who have not responded. Staffordshire County Council Highways, who have stated that they have no objections to the proposal, subject to uh, conditions were it to be approved relating to the um, installation of the uh, traffic involved in the installation of the uh, solar panels. Staffordshire County Council Public's right of, right of way team, they have also been consulted separately on it. They have raised no objections, but have highlighted that there are legal access requirements that um, ultimately do need to be followed. Staffordshire Police have been uh, consulted and have raised no objections. No response was received from the Staffordshire Wildlife Trust. No objections were received from the Tamworth Borough Council Environmental Protection Team and no strategic objections were raised by the Tamworth Borough Council um, development plans team. Many, many letters of objection were received, but from only uh, 37 different um, individuals or couples. Um, and also we received a petition in objecting to the proposal with 252 separate signatures. The key planning issues for it are its principle, character and appearance, landscape impacts, highway safety, ecology and amenity. Compatibility with the local plan and national planning policy framework uh, is an essential part of the principles. The majority of site 
is not allocated for any specific purpose in the local plan. There is a small section of the um, access um, route to the site outside of the applicant's ownership, which is designated by Staffordshire County Council as a site of county biological importance. As noted earlier, the application is part retrospective, part proposed, and it also has planning enforcement action in progress relating to the development, um, which is uh, currently um, underway. Planning application 0460-2022 was submitted to uh, uh, confirm that the uh, agricultural building existing at the site um, met the criteria set out in uh, part six, class A of the town and country planning general permitted development England order as uh, permitted development. So the agricultural building is therefore not part of this application. The principle of proposed development is therefore acceptable overall, subject to compliance with local plan policies. Looking at character and appearance, this is a uh, material planning consideration. The character of the wider site um, has changed. Um, it was uh, previously used uh, for agricultural purposes, but we believe has been abandoned for many years prior to it being um, acquired and um, re, uh, redeveloped for the purpose of market gardening activities. The application concerns an existing timber building and an existing track from the site entrance to the permitted building and its surroundings. The potential solar panel elements uh, of the application would most likely comply with um, permitted development requirements and is therefore not being considered in respect of character and appearance. Turning to the timber building, described as a restroom by the applicant, the building was designed to function with a mobile home uh, attached to it, the removal of which is subject of enforcement action. The timber building, um, located uh, just to the north of the, uh, the agricultural storage building, is, as you can see from the image there, of poor quality design, not in keeping with the appearance of the, the main building, uh, nor any other feature on the site. The access track and hard standing in the vicinity of the agricultural building has been uh, constructed predominantly of uh, demolition type material as a subbase and then um, uh, planings material um, rolled on top of that. Typically the track width is in the order of two and a half metres um, and it is of a relatively uniform appearance within the area belonging to the applicant. Outside of the applicant's ownership, where the track has been made up, it has only been made up sporadically, not comprehensively along its entire length, um, only in areas where we believe that vehicle use had damaged that unhard the unhardened surface. Um, there, demolition rubble was used to fill depressions, um, and um, that has been noted as uh, not an appropriate um, form of surfacing. Looking at the landscape impacts, um, Tamworth Borough Council's local plan has a, a policy EN1, landscape character, um, that uh, states that development and activities outside the urban area should be informed by landscape character assessments and contribute to the enhancement, restoration or regeneration of the landscape. The site is located within what is deemed to be a lowland village farmlands character area, uh, which has been acknowledged at being at risk of rapid loss of character within the, uh, the local plan. Landscape restoration developments there should use surviving character and landscape elements as a guide. Historic aerial photography indicating that the site had been unmanaged um, since the early 2000s up until 2020. Um, when the, um, the landscape, which by that point had become uh, largely self-seeded scrub, um, was later then cleared by the applicant. The proposal hasn't been supported by a landscape assessment. Um, however, on review of the proposals, the track in particular 
is deemed to have a negative impact upon the character of that landscape and is therefore considered to be non-compliant with policy EN1 of the local plan. Turning to highway safety, as noted earlier, vehicular access is from the northern end of Moor Lane via the byway open to all traffic. It's a short stretch of access on the bridleway and then undesignated track. Staffordshire County Council Highways was consulted upon this and has concluded that the proposal is acceptable in highway safety terms, subject to conditions during construction of the solar panel installation, and they've suggested that the timber building be used only for its end intended purpose ancillary to the agricultural building. Staffordshire County Council Public Rights of Way concluded that it, it has no objections. However, it stated that a private right of way is required under non-planning legislation to ensure legal access to the site. The development would therefore comply with policy SU2 of the Tamworth Local Plan and the NPPF in highways terms. Turning to ecology, policy EN4 of the local plan requires that development should not result in a net loss of biodiversity, ensuring that where harm to biodiversity is unavoidable, and it has been demonstrated that no alternative sites are suitable, development is adequately mitigated or as a last resort compensated for, otherwise planning permission should be refused. Clearly ecology concerns have been raised by members of the public. In respect of this application, the concerns would be limited not to the overall site, but merely to the, the track and the timber building, which form the, the focus of the application. As noted before, Staffordshire County Council Ecology was consulted, but have not responded um, directly on this application. Finally, turning to amenity, uh, the nearest neighbours to the site south of the railway line on Selka Drive, around 90 metres from the site and separated from it um, by uh, a road and the railway line. The development is visible from the football fields at the Anchor Valley Sports Complex. However, users of the football fields there are clearly not resident and would not be significantly impacted by it. Consequently, the, uh, uh, this, the, the view there is that there is unlikely to be a direct impact upon neighbour amenity from the proposal due to the assistance of the site from actual neighbours. Looking, looking however at amenity of persons using the bridleway and access track north of the byway open to all traffic, vehicle activity accessing the site would have the potential to impact amenity of those users. It should be noted though that the use of the byway open to all traffic by vehicle is legally acceptable. However, vehicle, vehicle use of the bridleway and non-designated track is subject to the existence of private rights of way, which are not a material planning matter. The non-designated part of the access route is not a public footpath, nor is it on common land but it is used by walkers to access the railway footbridge and the public footpath that crosses the bridge. The amenity issue in this context is the general interaction between vehicles and pedestrians brought about by the development. Although there are interactions between walkers and vehicle users accessing the site, from a, a neighbour amenity perspective, the proposal is considered to be in accordance with the amenity aspects of policy EN5 design of new development of the Tamworth local plan. So in conclusion, the proposal for the installation of a stoned access track, manoeuvring area to the front of agricultural building and timber restroom, retrospective, installation of solar panels to rear roof slope, has been considered in respect of its principal character and appearance, highway safety and ecology terms. It has been noted that the proposed installation of solar panels was most likely fall within the scope of the Town and Country Planning General Permitted Development Order 2015, and therefore um, that has not been uh, covered in detail uh, by in this report. The remaining elements of the application, the track and the hard standing, and retention of the timber building, have, however, 
been found to be contrary to the design requirements of the Tamworth local plan. As a consequence, it is the um, council's recommendation that the application be refused. Thank you for your report, Andrew. Before we move to questions, we do have two more speakers. Um, first of all, I'd like to ask Councillor Dean. Thank you, Chair, for allowing me to speak. And can I start by thank, saying thank you to the residents of Bowl Hall who have regularly attended our surgeries and spent so much of their time researching the implications of this development. And at times, feelings have run high, but in the main, conversations have been constructive with residents looking for a way to resolve this situation. As councillors will see from the papers in front of you, I called in the application on the grounds of one, impact on the amenity of neighbours. This has not only been the serious level of traffic going down Moor Lane onto the applicant's land, but also the safety of residents who walk along those footpaths and bridleway and people accessing the Moor from the Monkey Bridge. Number two, the impact on the surrounding area. This is the same concerns, the level of traffic along what is a one-way lane, which has before been merely access to the resident's property, so previously had very limited traffic and certainly not a constant stream of lorries. Number three, the character of area and design. Anyone who has visited this site recently can't help but be dismayed by the change to the area. Paragraph 6.21 mentions that the site was cleared of vegetation, but it was not just vegetation. The clearance involved veteran trees, which cannot be replaced and are lost forever, which feeds into the final reason, the impact on trees, gone and irreplaceable. And this is not only on the developer's land, but also along the path leading to his land. And as I say, this has resulted in irreversible damage. So, councillors, I'd like to draw your attention to what my residents feel are some serious areas in the process of this planning application. They feel that the application before you today um, should not have been validated and they are worried that if determined today, the decision could be challenged. Um, the officers are advising within the report before you today that planning considerations include landscape impact highway safety and ecology yet there very seems very little reports that we've had through i'm very concerned that we haven't got any ecology report that's been one of the main issues that residents have been talking about throughout this process is the devastation to the land so um <sighs> The, the other issue that it does mention in the papers is the fact that this site is a fl flood zone three, yet no flood risk assessment was required. So at the very least, my residents feel that the refusal sh should include lack of eco ecological, landscape, traffic and flood risk evidence. And as I say, I have very serious concerns over the lack of a, an ecology report. Anyone who has visited the site recently will be able to see the impact that, um, that the track has made. Um, oh, I'm see, I'm running out of time. <laughs> um, and also, there's no mention in the papers of the plot of land that is owned by a, somebody else. So I would like that taken into consider and consideration. And councillors, can I ask that you confirm the recommendation to refuse the application? Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Dean. I'd like to invite Councillor Daniels to speak now. Thank you for allowing me to speak, Chair. Councillors, as noted in your pack, this is a retrospective application requested for an unauthorised development that has occurred. Moreover, an enforcement notice was issued by Tamworth Borough Council on the 28th of March, which took effect on 13th of May to remove the access track, the timber building, and to restore the land to its condition prior to development. Councillor Smith publicly stated, we require the area to be receded with grass. On landscape, 
It is a place of specific biological interest, a place of environmental interest being on Warwickshire Moor and a mineral buffer zone. In the 2019 planning application for this land, we read that one constraint is that the space is a riverbank buffer. On the local plan policies map, the land after the bridge on both sides of the path are sites of county biological importance. The area is also classed as a flood zone. A stoned access track could increase the risk of flooding as there would not be adequate drainage. The local policy plan EN4 states, Development that would involve the removal of any tree or hedgerow which contributes significantly to its setting will be resisted unless the wider benefits of the development are sufficient to offset the loss. Where the removal of, sorry, is justified, appropriate mitigation planting will be required to offset the loss of these features. The land surrounding, now part of the development, has seen tree loss, land change and little evidence of offsetting. On page 855 of the National Policy Planning Framework, reread. Planning policies and decisions should also ensure that the new development is appropriate for its location, taking into account pollution. They should protect tranquil areas which have remained relatively undisturbed by noise and limit the impact of light pollution. Councillor Dean and I have evidence of light pollution from concerned residents. Now to other material concerns. Local plan policy EN5 states that new developments will be expected to pay particular regard to highway safety and servicing requirements. Over the past 12 months, Multiple daily journeys at all hours by several types of vehicles have been witnessed by residents, including HGVs and a van advertising a uniform company, leading to walkers and residents contacting councillors and the police raising safety concerns. We read in the pack that vehicle access is currently from the northern end of Moor Lane by a boat until the railway line. However, Moor Lane is a designated dead end street that boasts ceased at a gate that was locked. Former councillor Cooper confirmed that the street team would be repairing the gate and installing a new lock. As noted, a bridleway runs underneath the West Coast Main Line by way of a tunnel, and for vehicles to access this, the highways agency would need to offend our definitive map and ensure safe operation. On behalf of those who conducted research, written to the council, signed a position and acted as custodians for this park common land and already purchased on land, on which this development has now occurred, thank you for listening. We recommend that you do not pass this. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Daniels. I'd like to move questions now, and I know I have two eager councillors already waiting in the wing. Councillor Summers. Can I accept my turn after Councillor Smith, please? Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Um, I've got a question. Just bear with me. A couple of points. Absolutely agree with the report and the refusal. Um, I think the residents have made their, their, um, their opinion on this well known. And, you know, well done for that. You know, actually, this is a great example where you know, residents have come together and said, no, this is ridiculous, this is a blight on, on the area, it's a disruption to the area and it shouldn't go through, so credit to them. Um, I just wondered, just a question, niggly little thing, of course, uh, on the detail, just wondering in the, in the report it does mention about how uh, in EN1, um, it, didn't, it didn't suffice with uh, ENY, EN1, why wasn't that uh, one of the reasons for refusal? Uh, the refusal was EN5, just wondering why it wasn't also included EN1 as well, the local plan. EN1 could be used as well, um, however, we were focusing very much on the design aspect of it in that reason for refusal. Just a little comeback, I would just say this might well come back, of course, in a different form. I would just suggest that Bowl councillors stay on top of this, make sure anything, uh, any changes to it in any sense, come back to the committee at, uh, at any relevant point. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Smith. Councillor Kingston. Thank you. Um, oh, Councillor. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Can I, can I just ask, um, th this was down for uh, refusal before it was called in here. Can I just confirm that? The application was called in by Councillor Dean very early on, at which point we were still going through the assessment process. So the um, decision to uh, recommend refusal has come about following the consultation and assessment process. 
which actually was completed after it was requested for calling. Um, can I just add that um, it would have gone on the agenda in any event, because I think it's in the public interest. That's fine. I just wanted to confirm that, because obviously the, the very nature of it coming here could well have flipped that on its head. And if the committee were minded, we could have actually approved it instead and undone that work that had been done. So I just wanted to make that clear. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. So much, Councillor Kingston. Yeah, to bring up a point that Councillor Dean and Councillor Daniels have brought up, um, the questions really are, why no ecology report with such a site like this? I've got other questions as well, but we'll start with that one. Staffordshire County Council was consulted. I've made numerous attempts by telephone and email to contact the county ecologist did not get a response. Thank you. So in effect, the County Council couldn't be bothered to respond to a Borough Council request for an ecological report on a site of, what was it, scientific interest of some element of it? Um, moving on to the next question then. Why was there no flood risk assessment carried out? Is that the same answer? There was no formal requirement for a flood risk assessment to be uh, provided due to the nature of the development um, and that's why it wasn't included in the application. Okay, um, somebody in this room brought a petition to council about removal of hedges some time ago and um, we've heard this evening from Councillor Daniels that in installing the track, trees and similar matters that could be referred to as hedgerows have been impacted on. Why have we got to this stage now where a track has been allowed to be installed that has had such an impact um, without action being taken against the applicant? The, um, the track itself um, is only a very small part of the much wider site. And, <laughs> okay. Can I ask for quiet, please, while the officer responds? The track, as I said, is only a very small part of a much wider site the overwhelming majority of which was probably including the track as well, was cleared before the, um, the application for um, the agricultural building was submitted. So the actions undertaken in, re in respect of vegetation predate any council involvement. Thank you. Um, I think this may be my last one for the time being. Given that the site is fairly isolated, and very isolated by the look of it on the images presented to us this evening, how is an applicant supposed to gain access to the site? How did the previous owner of the land, are we aware, gain access to the site? And there is a, a, an extension onto that question. Are we aware of that? I think in terms of the application, it's probably not a material issue, a material consideration as to, you know, the previous owner of the size and how they accessed their land. Um, I mean, I, I don't know whether officers know the answer to the question, but it wouldn't be material anyway. Thank you. Um, the the add-on bit to that is if we've got to this stage where uh, we've had all this work taking place and we've now got an application retrospective as it is, put in, why have officers not advised, or that you may have advised, the applicant as to an alternative method for um, stoning said track or gaining access to their property? What I'm trying to get at here is we've heard 
heard this evening that potentially there is the possibility of further appeals to this application should this committee be minded to approve. To avoid that process, would it not be a logical thing for officers to do to advise applicants better about potential applications? I think in answer to that question, it, it's similar to the previous question. It, it's not a material consideration in relation to the application before you. Whether it's material or not, with all respect, is not particularly of concern to the residents here this evening. They want to make sure that with every application that is presented to Tamworth Borough Council, the officers advise the applicant and also ensure that applications, and this is an observation more than a question, so I do apologise, and do show due diligence to both the applicant and residents. I don't expect an answer. I was just going to say, I mean, that may well be the case, but obviously you are the Council's plain committee. You're here to determine the application on the plain merits, and it's not a material consideration. I was just going to say, you know, this has been ongoing for some time. As we're all aware, probably the best part of six, nine months, perhaps longer, there's been several conversations with residents and several conversations with the applicant agent. But let's not forget this is retrospective. This was done without consent. Mm -hmm. That's why we're here today, to regularise it or otherwise. It's up to you whether you do that. Should we can't take questions from the floor? Councillor Clark. Thank you. Uh, officers, forgive me if I'm Anglo-Saxon on this. This appears to be a very DIY attempt at doing something with a piece of land that's lain empty for a long while. It was not a good attempt, and I'm sure that officers normally would have given advice had it not been a retrospective done without your knowledge in the first place. You have taken a, um, action on it since, as you said, um, that things were going to be trying to be put back to normal. You can't put back native trees that have been dug up, um, and I'm afraid that is something that's really a concern for all of us. However, I'm concerned that you, you resident safety is being put at risk in this area. The impact surrounding the rest of the, uh, the area surrounding it is being impacted on badly. Um, and I understand that, the, well, having seen the, shall we say, the character of the place, um, with a nice timber building with no windows and other things of that nature, it's within 100 yards of a brook. Um, this is a designated flood zone number three. Uh, doesn't seem like a very happy place to have any kind of development. Um, it doesn't comply with EN1. Um, so, however we look at this so-called track, however we look at the poss possibility of solar panels in the future, um, the track and the building are contrary to our local plan also. There seems to me, as a new starter in this committee, that we have ample reason to say no. And I would prefer that we do. Thank you, Councillor Clark. Councillor Summers. Thank you, Chair. As we appear to have moved on to debate, um, can I uh, motion, uh, move a motion for refusal, please, and uh, look for a second? Uh, uh, include the um, the lack of the ecological report as a as a part of the reasons why for refusal as well. Thank you. Looking for a second, that. I'll take Councillor Adams.
Sorry, members. Just, just going back to the reasons for refusal. I think in relation to the third reason for refusal, the, um, the ecological reason for refusal, I, I think there is a potential risk here that currently we don't have any sort of report in place. There is no real evidence to say that there is an ecological impact. And as such, it may be difficult if the application was refused and appealed to sustain a reason for refusal on appeal. The reason being is that there is no evidence supporting an ecological impact. Now, sometimes less is more, and obviously there are reasons for refusal here. There are two reasons for refusal. Clearly, if you were to impose a third reason for refusal and it went to appeal, you may find yourself in a situation where you're in an appeal where you may have to withdraw a reason for refusal because it can't be supported. So I think you just need to be mindful that the officers have set out in the report two, two reasons for refusal. They, they are you know, reasonable grounds for refusal, you know, in terms of what, what's actually said in the report. But in terms of an ecological impact, there is no evidence to say there is an ecological impact. I appreciate the fact that the County Council haven't responded. But that in itself is not sufficient to say there's an ecological impact. I mean, they may well have just decided, well, we're not going to submit a consultation response, we're not going to respond. Okay, why consult them then? If we didn't think there was any, enough reason to? Well, there's such a consultee that they're one of the parties that need to be consulted in an application. Not all statutory consultees will respond to a consultation process. They may decide not to respond at all. They may respond and say no objection or no objection subject to conditions. So, I mean, that's really a matter for them as a statutory consultee. But we asked for an ecological report and didn't get one. Now, if, if I may, Chair, um, we did not ask the applicant to provide an ecological report. That's not what I'm saying. We asked the County Council for an ecological report and we didn't get one. No, we asked the County Council to consider the application as a whole from an ecology perspective. We didn't get a response, but that's not the same as asking for an ecological <coughs> report on the applicants in the first place. Is it simply a case of saying we've consulted with the County Council, but on that particular aspect, we did not get a response from them. So we asked them to consider the ecological aspect as a whole, but we didn't get a response to that. Okay. That's a problem. Thank you, Councillor Summers. Councillor King. No. No, it was just to clarify that I was under the impression I asked about the ecological report and you said no, they didn't respond. But I get that it was in the round, in the hole. For the purposes of clarity, there was no ecological report provided by the applicant to support the development. That was not required. However, because part of of the access track runs through a site of county biological importance, it was deemed appropriate to consult Staffordshire County Council ecology team because of that one element of it. However, we did not get a response from Staffordshire County Council. Does anyone else want to speak on this matter? Councillor Smith? Yeah, I was just going to say, I mean, there's meaning in the sense that they didn't respond in the, you know, they didn't exactly come back and say, yes, <coughs> it's, it's fine. So that in itself has its own story. Can I ask, Chair, really, if it went to appeal and we've got we've tacked on another reason we feel is appropriate, does it really hurt? Does it? It doesn't make doesn't mean the whole thing is up in the air and the whole thing, the other two objections, suddenly disappear just because they've made a chink in one of our parts of our armour. I think the difficulty with including a reason for uh, reason for refusal, which isn't supported by the evidence is that clearly in the appeal process the, the appellant, the applicant who will become the appellant, 
will have to prepare their case for the appeal. As part of that, they'll have to prepare their case in relation to the ecological aspect of the refusal. Obviously, if it goes to before an inspector and the inspector finds that there isn't any evidence to support that reason for refusal and you put the applicant to that cost, then the inspector is likely to find that the council is acting unreasonably and award a cost order against the council to obviously reimburse the applicant for the cost of having to put that evidence. Um, the fact that it is noted and marked down as an area of biological importance, I would suggest, is evidence enough for that, uh, for us to defend that position. I think in terms of evidence, you would need expert evidence to support that reason for refusal. I mean, it's, it's not anecdotal evidence, and the fact that the County Council hasn't responded is not in itself an indication as to their position in relation to ecological, ecological matters. So I think in terms of an ecological reason for refusal, that has to be supported by expert evidence, which would be put to scrutiny if the matter went to appeal. So are we saying that an expert did not tell the County Council to designate it an area of biological importance? I'm sorry, I'm not sure the relevance of that statement. And I, I, you know, I, as a legal advisor, I can only advise you that you've got two reasons for refusal currently. Now, if you want to add on the ecological reason for refusal, that is really within your gift. But the risk of that is that it's not supported by any expert evidence. And if it goes to appeal, then you are likely to be subject to a cost award against you if you have to re re withdraw it at a later stage and the appellant has been put to the cost of, of producing evidence to show that, the, that, the, that what is proposed is ecologically acceptable. Okay, I'm, I'm happy to move as is unless somebody has any other uh, additional reasons to add. Thank you, Councillor Thomas. Councillor Smith? Yeah, just due, due diligence here. Um, I mentioned, obviously, EN one and I probably didn't mention the is it national planning policy framework was another reason for the refusal it's not in the reasons for refusal in the report do I need to move that just to ensure it's one of the reasons please let's just find out for you Sorry, Chair, just to clarify, it's in the report, but it's not in the reason for refusal at the end, just to clarify. We've just had a quick chat. <laughs> Got the local plan here. Um, yeah, we, just, we were just looking at the precise wording of that policy to make sure that it's acceptable. It's in the paragraph 6.5.3, by the way, at the end, in the report. If you wanted to include EN1 in addition, I think we would we would be so And the national policy planning framework as well, which is sorry, which is in the same sentence. In principle, yes, if it supports what EN1 is saying. Can I move that and look for a seconder? Can we? I was going to say, can I add that to my um, original motion that I moved? Additional reasons, thanks. Can we just clarify the reasons so we can get them correct? Yeah, the reasons are actually in the report, as, as I've said. So just to clarify, uh, it is 6.5.3. As a result, the development would uh, accord with policy... As a result, the de development would accord with policy N. Sorry, one moment. Let's just get the right one. I actually mentioned it a moment ago. second lost it oh that's there isn't it yeah sorry 6.3.4 as a result of this 
Part of the proposal was therefore not in compliance with policy EN1 of the Tamworth Local Plan 2006-31 and the NPPF. Is that all right? <laughs> Yeah, I was just going to say, yeah, I'm looking at the MPPF now, the beauty of technology. And yes, in paragraph 180, there's an emphasis here by saying planning policies and decisions should contribute to the enhance the, the natural and local environment by protecting and enhancing valued landscapes. So there's a, yeah, there's a specific section within the MPPF. So we can add that in. Yes, so in the MPPF, there is an endorsement of landscape issues like this. So I think we can definitely add the MPPF to that reason for refusal. Thank you. I'm happy to, to move all of that. Um, if, if we're going to refuse it, and we, um, as stated, we need to make sure the refusal is robust at appeal. Thank you, Councillor Summers and Councillor Smith. So we're looking to refuse the application in accordance with Councillor Smith's motion. Obviously, I've got Councillor Summers moving and Councillor Smith seconding. Yep. We'll go to the vote. All those in favour? All those against? Any abstentions? So that's moved by Councillor Summers and Councillor Smith. Thank you very much. And So on to item number six, any updates from the planning officers? No updates, thank you. Okay. Then I'd like to thank you, all members, members of the public and those watching on YouTube and thank you for their patience this evening. That concludes the business of this meeting and I close the meeting at 7.